Hello, this is Big Fat Video Game Nerd, and I'm coming at you with my full review for Diablo 3. After just beating it, I have a lot to say. If you saw my beta review, you already know that in my opinion, Diablo 3 is a deceptively good game. It severely lacks on the wow factor, but makes up for it big time in the fun factor and multiplayer aspects. The biggest thing I noticed going from beta to launch was dramatically increased production value. The zones get bigger, the monsters get bigger, the music even gets bigger. And the game gives you the real CG movies that are practically worth the cost of the game themselves. If you like the beta, you will love the full version. If you haven't tried either yet, try this game. In Diablo 3, you can play a wizard, witch doctor, demon hunter, barbarian, or monk. Different classes than what Diablo fans are used to, but they are well built. The main difference is that this game is intended for online play, so we clearly have crowd control, tank, and damage classes, whereas in Diablo 2, everyone was a one-man army. That said, every class will feel independently strong throughout most of the game. By Nightmare Mode, or mostly just maybe Act 3, you really start to feel like one role in a team instead of an absolute independent hero of the world. So basically, your hero stumbles across the unfolding arrival of the evils to our world, on their search for challenges and decide to go fight them. Kind of simplistic backstory, but it does do the job of getting you into the action and to make up for it with a better story that unfolds throughout the game. At first glance, the game will seem incredibly simplistic and dated, but if you give it a chance, it turns out to be extremely fun and very addictive. The game is a little more than a repetitive dungeon crawl, but destroying massive amounts of monsters, constantly upgrading to better gear, customizing your abilities, and of course showing up your friends in multiplayer really makes it fun throughout the whole game. It really seems easy at first, but as you, you know, get further into it, like all Blizzard games, it really kind of eases you in. By nightmare mode, you shouldn't be able to solo the game anymore. In full reviews for games, Big Fat Video Game Nerd ranks things on 11 different factors and assigns a point value from 1 to 10 and some of these scores may be rated. I'm going to go over these now. First up is the wow factor. This game has a very simple and dated feel, but it doesn't actually affect how fun the game is. It's not like a game like Mass Effect 3 where every 5 seconds I'm stopping to just show my friends how cool it is and I'm constantly being blown away. I assign the wow factor for Diablo 3 a very low score of 5. And I think in the area of wowing customers and players, it doesn't do a very effective job, and I'm giving a failing score of 5. The second criteria I rank the game in is its fun factor. In this game, I'm going to give it a very high score of a 9.5. It's very up there among the greats. It's just a lot of fun to sit down, wreck some skeletons, and play it with your friends. I'm going to give it a weighted factor of 3 to 1, as it's very, very, very fun. Third up, graphics. The graphics are clean. It isn't like looking at first gen 3D models, but it isn't impressive either. Not with games like that we're currently playing these days like Metro 2033 and Max Payne 3 on my list. In fairness, they are designed to remind you of playing Diablo 2 and you get a very nostalgic feel from it, but the graphics aren't very impressive. So I'm only going to give this a score of 7. Um, it's not failing, but it's also not impressive. Next up is the sound. I'm going to give it the same score as the graphics, a 7. They were keeping true to the Diablo 2, but the score isn't exactly a game like Drake's Fortune. There are some amazing themes playing towards the end of the game and during the cut sequences, but if you aren't looking for it, the normal gamer won't stop playing to comment on the music or the sound effects. Next up, the controls. Our biggest complaint by far with the game. We're going to have to give it a very low score of 5. The control scheme definitely fails with this type of game. The always centered camera does not pair well with the click to move and attack control scheme, especially when trying to click on mobs while blinking or getting pulled around by vortexes or even trying to pick the one summoner out of a crowd of skeletons. There are several ways that Blizzard could improve this part of the game, like adding an option to where you can scroll to the edge of the screen and click to move and things like that. Choice. Length. Eight. If you solo the whole game, it could take you upwards of 30 hours for your first playthrough, which is a decent length game for the money. If you're playing it with friends, it'll probably cut that time in half, but with three more difficulty settings, really as far as length goes, you're getting the game worth the money. Presentation gets good marks at it in 8. Graphics and sound are par at best, but the game is smooth and fun. It never feels cheap and the CG really brings that production value we have all come to love from Blizzard. Replay value. Now, as you guys know, it's nearly impossible to get a perfect 10 on our scores, but 
If there's any game that can possibly get a perfect score for replay value, it's probably the Diablo series. This weighs in three times as powerful as other stats. Multiplayer. The multiplayer is inventive and more importantly fun. We hope to see a lot more video games of this style multiplayer in the future. It's going to weigh in three times to one and I give it a nine. I actually really liked the story itself, just not the way that it was told. The story comes off a little campy at times, drags unnecessarily at other times, and some of the twists feel overly predictable. I do like the addition of missives, NPC chatter, and banter, so please keep this kind of stuff up, Blizzard. It doesn't fail in this category, I'm giving it a 6, but let's just say it's not Mass Effect story-wise. And Blizzard, I really found myself more interested in the story of the scoundrel, scoundrel than Leah by the end of the game. Creativity. Blizzard, I really gotta hand it to you. I know this is gonna sound weird, but this game design was a very risky move. And even though it's just like Diablo 2, it's definitely not like anything else that's come out in the last 10 years. And I think that qualifies it for being different and creative. I'm going to give it an 8 in this category. Well, Unless, of course, you've played Torchlight. And now the part of the video that actually matters. The part that you've been waiting for. I'm going to give you the final score for this game. Single player is probably an 8.0. But the multiplayer is more like a 9.0. And let's be honest. This game isn't a single player game, so I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5. And in closing, I think this is a very good game. It's definitely worth getting. It may not blow you away at first, but you'll still be coming back to Kill Diablo for years to come. It won't be the best game of the year. I think we all know what game that's going to be. And if you're a gamer, you definitely should not pass up Diablo 3.